Warning, this video depicts the use of machinery that could easily mulch your hand before you even notice and that could really ruin your afternoon. So safety first and remember that today is a bad day to lose a finger. Hello everybody, welcome back to Fanblade Instruments. Today we are going to start work on the bass guitar that we designed in the last video. And we're going to start by just tracing the shape onto a piece of plywood and cutting it out so we've got a template for making multiple copies of the same guitar. Just some light sanding to bring the shape down to the line that we've uh, that we've got. The plywood's pretty thin, and it's very easy to take off too much, so you've got to be particularly careful here. The wood I'm using is a piece of mahogany that came from the top of a dresser that one of the kids had. When we shifted house she didn't need it anymore, so I've now got it to make instruments out of. I'm not too worried about that strip of paint on the edge. Uh, that part of the wood will actually just be an offcut anyway, but I do want to have the paint flat enough that I can glue the two boards together without anything separating them. Most of the time I just use my finger to spread out the glue, but uh, on a large surface like this it's nice to have a uh, paint scraper to do it. Then uh, I come in with my finger around the edges just to make sure I get the glue nice and even across the entire board. Every woodworker should own as many clamps as possible. I own lots and lots, but I don't own any quite wide enough to get into the centre of that board. So my solution is quite simple, just put down a couple of blocks to raise the uh, board up and then have enough room uh, at the top to put a very heavy thing in the middle.
for the neck, I'm going to be using a very old piece of oak that I found. It appears to have been left out in the weather for a long, long time, and the finish that was once applied to it, probably over 50 years ago, has long since started to perish. It's a plain sawn board, and I'll be re sawing it to glue up laminated necks that are quarter sawn. I'll be using oak and quiller, which is a very hardy wood, and I can buy that uh, straight from Bunnings Warehouse for not very much money, and it's from sustainable forests as well. My table saw needs a little bit of an explanation. It's actually a tile cutting saw that I've modified to have a saw blade on it. There's no guide, there's no guard, it's extremely dangerous and I do not recommend anybody do this. I am planning to get a proper table saw with all the requisite safety features uh, at some time in the future but I don't have one now so what I need to do now is be very very careful with the one that I've got. While it's all set up I'm going to saw up a lot of wood so that I can make a batch of necks. gluing the boards together in the much the same way as we did before. The rule of thumb when you're gluing two bits of wood together is that if you have no squeeze out then you have not used enough glue. If you have some squeeze out then you have enough glue and if you have a lot of squeeze out then you've wasted a lot of glue. bit of a clean up and then we can set that aside for 24 hours for the glue to cure. After the clamps come off the body blank, the template comes along and we simply trace the shape onto the body and then cut it out on the bandsaw. Now that's done, we'll put the body aside for a while while we work on the neck. I should have used some wax paper when I put the clamping calls on each end. They stuck to the wood a little bit harder than I would have liked. I cleaned the excess glue off with a chisel and then planed the rest. This machine is very very dangerous indeed. When I got it, it didn't have the safety guard, it's quite an old machine so it's difficult to find replacement parts for it but as soon as I can find one I will definitely be installing the safety guard. Now we just want to check that the 
centre line is very much in the centre. Make sure that everything is square and even and get ready to cut the scarf joint. I like to do my headstocks at a 9 degree angle and it's quite easy with the marking gauge just to mark a line and then very very carefully and slowly cut it out on the bandsaw. Sanding the scarf joint so that it's perfectly square and perfectly flat. The flatter the wood, the better the joint. Have a bit of a tidy up and then we're ready to glue the two pieces of wood together. When clamping a scarf joint the two pieces of wood can slide apart from each other but I find if you clamp at each end lightly and then slowly increase the tension on both sides then you can sort of pin the thing in place. If you, if you kind of sneak up on it, you can get it to lock in place. Add plenty of clamps, and then it's ready to go down for another 24 hours while we make the fingerboard. This is another piece of quiller which I'm cutting to length and then I'm going to take a 6mm slice off it. This is a very slow process. You have to not push too hard. The wood has hard bits and soft bits in it and if you push hard the blade will want to follow into the soft bits and it'll start to wander all over the place. So. Even though most of the footage you've been watching is 8 times regular speed, this footage here is 16 times regular speed. It just takes a long time, you have to be patient and go slow. bit of a clean up and now we're ready to install the truss rod although just before we do that we need to clean up the scarf joint a little bit now I need to leave a space at the top of the truss rod slot for an allen key to fit in there and uh, so I marked all that out. The nut on the end of the truss rod is also slightly wider and will sit slightly deeper into the neck, so I need to make allowances for that when I'm cutting the slot as well. Setting up the router can take a very long time. I've cut out a lot of that. There we go. I'm going to cut the slot in three passes, taking a little bit out each time and then clean up the headstock end.
now I've done that I can have a test fit. Realised that it's not quite sitting flush. So we go back in, readjust the router and one last pass just to skim a little bit more off the bottom. And there it is, a perfect fit. Time for a bit of a clean up and then we'll install the fingerboard. The gluing surface of this fingerboard is actually the outer surface of the original piece of wood. It's uh, got wet at some point and a lot of the internal uh, oil in the wood has risen to the surface. That will not be good for the glue joint, so just using a bit of wax and grease remover to clean that off so that it will uh, soak up lots of glue later on. Also putting some masking tape over the truss rod just so that we don't get glue in the channel to stick it down because that would not be good. The fingerboard is currently wider than the neck. I'm not that worried about that, we are going to plane it off later. And clamp him if you got him. I'm just going to plane off the overhang of the fretboard just with a little block plane. The idea is to get a perfectly flat straight edge so that we can run a set square up there to mark out the fret positions. I'm using a straight edge to check that the neck is perfectly straight, perfectly flat. A bit of a clean up. start measuring out the fret positions. Checking of course that the edge of the fingerboard is exactly where we want to measure from and that it is perfectly square. We tape the ruler down and just like we did when we designed the thing in the first place we mark out all the positions. This is one of the most important steps to get right. If you get this wrong you'll wind up with the fret in the wrong place and the bass won't play in tune. So just take your time, there's no prizes for getting it wrong in a hurry. Taking a very sharp knife, we score the lines exactly where they need to be, as precisely as you can, making sure that on the first pass you're pressing very lightly. If you press too hard there's a fairly good chance that the blade will wander away from the square and then you've got real problems.
the next step is to use a very very fine craft saw I got mine at a model shop you put a bit of tape on it to mark the depth that you want to cut to and you very very carefully very very carefully extremely carefully cut the slots the blade on this saw is about 0.4 of a millimeter that's too narrow to fit a fret in but this is only a pilot slot anyway it's the equivalent of drilling a pilot hole when you're drilling a very large hole we are making a cut so that when we do the radiusing and the rest of the shaping of the fingerboard we'll know that we've got slots that are cut perfectly square to the centre line. Cutting the neck taper is fun, you simply mark out the width of the neck at the 24th fret and then you mark out the width of the nut measuring from the centre line of course, transfer that over to the neck and then rule a couple of lines, make them nice and dark so that we can go to the bandsaw and cut them. I just want to transfer the marks for the nut across to the back of the neck so that I can cut some relief. And then cut the rest of the neck. The headstock isn't quite wide enough for the design, so we need to glue a couple of pieces of wood onto the sides of the headstock. So I've marked those out, gone to the bandsaw, cut out a couple of blocks, and we'll just clamp those on. Again, clamping lightly at first on each side, and then increasing the tension back and forth, back and forth make sure everything stays lined up. And here it is, we'll lay it out, and uh, it's starting to take shape, beginning to look like a bass guitar. We are going to be melding the rest of this next week, we'll finish the neck, do all the fretwork, and probably contour the body, and maybe even get to play the thing. So. Make sure you subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.